Welcome back to the Human Anatomy and Physiology Lab for 1300 series here at Ohio University. Today we'll be working with the skull. Go ahead and zoom on in here for me. First we're going to cover some of the structures, some of the bones of the face here, starting with the frontal bone. As we work our way down, you'll see we'll work into the zygomatic bone, coming around more laterally to the temporal bone, these two connected by the zygomatic arch. Here we have the temporal process of the zygomatic bone, and here, more posteriorly, we have the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Working more anteriorly again, the top portion of this plate is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, and just inferior to that, the vomer bone. Moving further down yet, we have the maxilla, and more inferiorly yet, the mandible some notable landmarks of the mandible being the mandibular angle right here. Other areas to focus on the skull. On both sides of the skull we have the parietal bone separated by the sagittal suture. We can also see the frontal or coronal suture. Working back more posteriorly, we have the occipital bone, which wraps all the way to the inferior portion of the skull. We have the lambdoid suture across the top. Coming down to the inferior portion of the skull, we have the foramen magnum, and this is where the spinal cord will enter into the skull as the brain stem. Also, we have a mastoid process on each side, which is just posterior to the ear. Also, we have on the occipital bone, this bony landmark here, is the external occipital protuberance, as well as the occipital condyles, which will articulate with the C1 vertebrae. Also, we have the head of the mandible, And on the anterior portion of the skull, we have the middle and inferior concha. Now we'll be going inside of the skull. First, most notable thing, again, our foramen magnum. Also, if you'll notice, you can see that there are three distinct fossa within the inside of the skull. Your anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, and posterior cranial fossa. Also, we have the cribriform plate, which is where your olfactory bulbs would sit. Here, the cella tersica, where the pituitary gland is positioned. Also, we have 
jugular foramen where the jugular vein will exit the skull. And that is all we have for the skull for this week's lab.